Hey guys, this is just a quick video tutorial about images for the web. As we've said before, images are crucial in your communication strategy. You've heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. But is it? That's a question we're going to take a look at as we look at images for the web, specifically for blogging purposes. So visuals are processed 60,000 times faster than words. So theoretically, you can process more information faster using images. Not only that, but pictures affect us more than words do. Words are kind of logical. They can be descriptive, but many times they are a little bit detached, whereas pictures can impress something upon us emotionally that words cannot necessarily do, and they do so in a shorter time frame. So for example, you can see this picture on your screen of North and South Korea. And this is a satellite image taken at night of the lights within the country. So the outline of North and South Korea is traced in white, but the lights within that outline are just taken as a picture from a satellite. And that picture powerfully communicates the issues between the difference between North Korea and South Korea. North Korea is extremely underdeveloped and impoverished. This little tiny dot right here is the capital of North Korea. And this is the capital of South Korea. And you can just see the vast difference and the effect of the political regimes on the development of the country. So that little image there communicates something in a way that words cannot. I could spend a lot of time talking about the situation in North Korea and how oppressive it is, but you're not really going to quite get it the same way unless you see pictures of the oppression that's going on, or in this case you can see the lack of economic development in the country. So visual communication is very important in those two ways. Not only faster, powerful communication, but also an emotional impact as well. So the right picture is really worth more than a thousand words. So the question for us is, how do I get the right picture for my blog and how do I present it in a way that makes it an effective communication tool on the web? So we're gonna take a look at that in the next few minutes together. First of all, let's talk about some image types, different image types that are used on the web. There are three of those. The first is called a GIF or a GIF there's still a debate going on about exactly how to pronounce it. That stands for Graphics Interchange Format. And there are several advantages that a GIF or GIF is used for, and primarily that is for animations. Now, in the old days of the web, these were really cheesy, and web developers always said, stay as far away from GIFs as you can because they make your website look tacky. You've got a lot of stuff going on, it's distracting, and in fact, I can almost guarantee you're not listening to me or reading what's on the screen. You're looking at the picture of the awesome goal that Gotsky scored in the World Cup championship game. It was truly amazing. That ball never even touched the ground. So, anyway, that shows you the power of what a GIF has the capability to do, but you want to use it in a very limited scope for very specific applications. It can attract a lot of attention, but it can also be distracting. And um, GIFs used to be pretty small in size because they were primarily um, built in a specific way. They weren't done with photos, as you can see this is. Now there are, there are much more powerful photo processing tools. Photoshop has the ability to convert video into a GIF like this. So these types of images are becoming extremely popular now, especially on social media like Google+. Facebook doesn't support them. Google+, does. Okay, so if you can tear your eyes away from the awesome goal that Gotsky scored, let's take a look at another type called JPEGs. These are one of the most common images that you'll find, especially images for the web, and it stands for Joint Photographic Expert Group. That doesn't mean much, though. That's just 
the group that decided they would name the image they developed after themselves. And it's a little bit narcissistic there. But those are typically the best for photos, for including photos in your post. On the other hand, there are PNGs. Those are portable network graphics. And those are typically used for logos or other types of images, especially if it's an image like the one you see here where the background is transparent and then you can layer that image over top of other images or text even and that becomes very useful especially for logos and headers and things like that. Now you have to be careful with all of these images because they have the potential to really bog down, slow down your website or blog and make it very clunky and distracting for your users. So let's talk a little bit about resolution in images. Now one thing you'll need to know is that most monitors are 72 or 96 pixels per inch. That means in every inch of real estate on your monitor there are 72 little dots that are pixels that compose the image. And if you look at the image below that is zoomed in on a typical screen and you can see that actually each one of these squares especially if you look at the white squares right here each one of these is a pixel but there are actually four little sub dots within that and the reason for that is you can see there are this is an RGB display which means that all these colors are composed of little red, green, and blue dots that are combined in various ways. So when you combine them all together you get white. But you can have the red and green separate and in various um, intensities which create various other colors on your screen. So every color on your screen is composed of a combination of red, green, and blue dots. Now, sometimes manufacturers will try to cheat you and say, you know, we've got this amazing resolution, and they calculate the resolution in terms of DPI, which they count the little sub dots that create each pixel as a separate dot per inch. So they're really cheating you because the standard is pixels per inch, and each picture, each, each pixel is its own standalone. Um, color varying in color piece of uh, screen real estate. So 72 is the standard for computer monitors. Um, you know your high resolution uh, iPad displays for instance will probably be 96 um, but 72 is a good one to go by. You don't want to go too high because your file size and the slowness at which your website loads increases exponentially with the size of the resolution. So you want 200, 300 uh, pixels per inch for printing, but you don't want that for your screen monitor because, like I said, your screen only has 72 pixels per inch. So even if you do throw a 200 pixels per inch image on there, it's not going to look any better on your screen because your screen is limited to 72 pixels per inch. Alright, so each of those pixels have different combinations of colors simply by varying those red, green, and blue dots within them. Alright, so let's look at some little tips for images on your blog. So keep them at low resolution, 72. Don't make them huge. You know, Try to stick with you know maybe 500 pixels wide at 72 pixels per inch at the most and that's a pretty reasonable size for a blog post. Um, don't choose themes that are very graphically intensive. If they've got multiple layers of images in the background sometimes those can be very large images and really clog things up pretty quickly. And for SEO purposes it's really helpful to name your images and to tag them descriptively. And you can do this if you just hover over an image, this is an example of a blogger post. If you hover over it, this little tool, toolbar appears below it. Click on the Properties tab, this Image Properties box will appear. So you can title that descriptively. 
Use those keywords that you've researched using the Google Keyword Planner and also do the same thing with the alternative text because your uh, Google search engine can't see pictures. It can't look at a picture and say, hey, I know what that is. That's a really good picture of such and such. Now, a human that's, that's uh, browsing through your post might see that and might catch their eye and, and really communicate something to them, but it doesn't mean anything to Google. So you have to really help Google by plugging in some of those keywords in your image properties on your blogger. So that'll get you started in optimizing your images for the web. But the question remains, where do we get good images like this? Where can we find free images? You know, most bloggers are on a pretty low budget, and so they have to be careful how much money they spend in images can get really expensive really fast if you start looking at some of the stock photo services. So um, I've just put together some options that I've used in the past for web design and blogging purposes. And they've been helpful for me. Hopefully they will help you out as well. Here's one called RGB Stock. There's a bunch of pictures on here that are completely free. All you have to do is register and they are very decent, good quality. Um, you can actually use them for print as well. Many of them are high enough resolution to be used for print. But therein lies the rub. You'll have to make sure that you know, once you download them, that you optimize them for the web. You can, uh, we'll talk about some photo editing tools that you can use for that. Um, but you can even just open those in a, in a Microsoft Office image editor and resize them to 72 pixels and make them optimal for your website. Another good source for free images is the Wikimedia Commons. They have 22 million plus freely usable media files contributed by various people. Many of these are the images that they actually use in Wikipedia that they've found that are public domain that are freely available to use and they load those here in Wikimedia so that other people can use them freely as well. You have to be really careful about using copyrighted content. Let me just put in a little note here that you can't just do an image search on Google and just use whatever image looks good. Um, that's one way to get in, in big trouble. I know a lot of people do it, but you don't want to be that one person who gets caught and gets sued for having a copyrighted image in your blog. Not only that, it is, it's unethical and it's unchristian to be stealing the hard work of photographers and graphic designers in creating these images. It really is a, it, it, it's become a challenging industry because the expectations are much higher than they have ever been for quality images and yet they're so freely available and there's so, so much piracy going on with images that it's, it's very difficult for anybody to make a good living at good quality images. So respect the artistry and the effort involved in creating good images and respect those copyrights as well. So, but these tools will help you find good quality images that people have been willing to share out of the goodness of their hearts to help you bloggers out. Um, so RGB Stock, Wikimedia are the two that are in their class, the best you know source of free images. You've also got these specialized image searches. Sprixy is one imagefinder.co is another one and what these are doing is looking for specific images that are in various kinds of um, common let me search for an example here let's see I'm looking for a classroom picture for my blog and I have some issues here because all the sources that this image search is looking at are actually blocked on the Maranatha network. But they have various licenses included with these pictures and so the, the caveat here is that some of these are, are usable in a personal blog, some of them are not. 
and some of them are, are very specifically licensed to be used for specific things. So these are just not free. You can use for whatever you want images, but you have to read the license that's included with them and uh, make sure that you are within your rights to use those images for what you want. Okay, so those two, Image Finder and Sprixy, have some good images on them, but you will want to make sure that your the license fits what you're trying to do with them. And then you've got, uh, this is dreamstime.com. They are one of the major um, publishers of paid stock images but they also include a free images area and it's basically a place where photographers can kind of spread the word it's like okay i'm going to i'm going to throw out one of my pictures uh, for free so that maybe you'll want to download some other ones and they'll try to try to arrange that in a way that kind of drags you in a little bit to some of the other paid stock images but there are some on there available and then here's another one that's really interesting um, this is Getty Images. It is one of the premier sources for images on the web. These are used heavily by newspapers, online uh, news, news sources. Um, pretty much all of the web heavily uses Getty Images. And they're expensive, except they've just released a new program just a few months ago where they are licensing these pictures to be used specifically in blogs and they hope actually to get more traffic to their site for paid image purposes as a result. So what you, what you can do, um, if you hover over any of these images um, and you put it in your shopping cart, you have to pay a whole lot of money for them, but there's this little code symbol underneath the, the picture. And if you click on embed this image, it gives you some code. And what that does, it, you don't actually, it doesn't give you that image. You have no ownership over that image, but you are allowed to borrow the image with attribution and it's going to automatically include a link to Getty Images within your blog. So let's test that out and see what it looks like. So I've hovered over the code, the embed code in that image and copied it. I just hovered over, selected it, right click to copy. And I go to my blog now click on HTML and right click again and paste so that code gets dumped in there you'll want to try to find the best location usually you'll want to put this in after you've written your text so find try to figure out where you want it in your text and click there and then paste so that it gets inserted somewhere in there and then if you go back here you can see aha that image is now showing up and when I click on it, it goes to the Getty Images page. Okay, so that's a that's a way to borrow top quality current images um, for free. You can use them in your blog legally. Um, and the nice thing about this is that it these images actually they're not going to slow down your blog at all because they're not loaded on your server they're not, they're not embedded in your page so it's that's kind of a nice feature on the other hand uh, they're not going to help your search engine optimization because they're not your image they don't have your tags in them so they're not the search engine is just going to pretty much completely ignore these images on your site now if there's anything good in them right here in inside the code see there's really not a whole lot in here that's going to help the search engine say oh I, I'm going to send some so and so to your site because you, you've got these pictures there's not really anything in here that's going to help your search engine optimization it's probably going to it's going to help Getty Images a whole lot because lots of people are linking to that and driving up the search engine ranking for Getty Images because there's so many links to it. So that's exactly why they're doing it. They're willing to share some of their images with you for the increased search engine optimization they get as a result. So it's a pretty good move on their part, but it's also helpful for us as well because you can get current pictures, top quality photography, 
of current events to post on your blog for free. So it's a pretty good deal. All right. So if you have any questions, you can send me an email. Um, we'll be, like I said, we'll be recording another session on different photo editors that you can use, how to use some of those to tweak your images. Because, um, again, images are crucial to good quality communication on your blog. I think you know that. So hopefully this will help you toward putting some good images on your blog. I'm looking forward to seeing them on your blogs. So thank you for watching.